Oh. Perfect. And then after that, we're going to get into <coughs> analyzing features of inverse functions. We'll probably do that actually before the DYU. And then lesson five, using models and inverse functions. That's the last new thing. It's not super new. All the other stuff we've done a whole lot of actually. We're just building on it. So as a recap, as a reminder, uh, graphically, what is, well, first off, let's do this. I, I think this is an important detail that I always need to focus on and I don't focus on enough. What's an inverse function? Recapping that at its core. Something about the inputs and the outputs, maybe. They don't cancel each other out. That's something else. So the inputs and outputs transpose, right? So at the core, the inputs and outputs transpose. That, that's the idea of an inverse function. Okay? That works no matter if you have a graph, an equation, a table, anything like that. We inverse functions by defining characteristic the inputs and outputs transpose. Remember I gave this simple case of 4 cubed is equal to what? Well, well it's equal to 64. Let's just jump there. What's the inverse of a cube? Mm -hmm. Not a square root, a cube root. And so what was my output is going to become my Input, and what's the cube root of 64? 4. The inputs and outputs transpose. What that cube root's asking is, hey, what was cubed to get 64? The inputs and outputs transpose. That's the defining detail or con, um, um, idea of inverse functions. Now, what does that mean algebraically? And Landon, this is kind of what you were hinting at a second ago. No, what you were hinting at a second ago. That's the transposing, is the inputs and outputs trade places. What did you say earlier? They what? When they compose, they... No, that's not what you said. What did you, who, who remembers what Landon said about the... You did say inputs and outputs. You probably meant to say compose, but there we go. So f of g of x, if they're inverses, what is f of g of x equal? X. Equals x. g of f of x would equal? X. Would equal x. If it was g of f of y, it would equal y, y right? So it's the idea that if they're inverses, they completely cancel out. If they don't completely cancel out, they're not inverses. So remember, this is what we should have already on that Fourier model, but if you want to add it on there, that's a great idea. Okay. So algebraically, the functions cancel out when composing. Uh, depends on where you want to write it. Is there anything on that uh, Frere model about... So there's one, find, well that's finding inverses algebraically. There's one that says, let's see, page 2, right, is where it just says inverses. And I will also point out, uh, on the bottom right of where it says inverse functions, it says composition of functions and checking inverses algebraically. So there's a few different places to put this. Okay. I want you to put it where you want to put it so that you can study it the best. I was like, I don't know what, what it, I don't know this term study means. <laughs> As he laughs. Now I'm not aware. Which makes it all the more impressive, but still. It's gonna catch up to you one day. One day. Yeah. I will say this. One good principle that I learned um, when I started working out is it's good and important to do things the right way for when it's easy. That way when it gets hard, it's easy to do the things the right way. 
going ahead and learning how to study even when it seems easy will help you a lot when stuff gets hard. Um, I'm trying to help you out. All right. So algebraically, the functions cancel out when composing. So there's examples. Uh, we'll look at some more in a second. But what does that mean graphically? What happened? Well, so let me ask you this. Y equals X versus X equals Y, what's the difference? There's not one. You're, you're saying that the X and the Y are the same thing no matter what, right? So you can just say one of them. It does not really matter. You look like you have a, quite a thought about that. Well, yeah, I was just thinking the writing implies that one would be input versus output. That is implied as different as we can see. Here? Yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. You're saying here the output is Y. Is out Y. Here the output is X. But yeah. at the same time, it's going to be the same line, right? Yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, but I mean, that's the same idea here is that G of F of X equals X. G of F of Y equals Y. Is same thing. They're the same. Y is equal to X. Um, I was just trying to illustrate that they're the same function. Yeah. They're the same one. That, that's it for the most part, guys. That's what we've learned over this time. That, that's the big ideas of this function. Um, well, applying these ideas, yes. So we're going to apply these ideas a little bit more before we demonstrate your understanding. I, I hope that's okay with you, Miles, that we practice some. I would assume it's okay with most of us that we practice some. Okay, so this was uh, where we left yesterday. I asked you for homework, and I'm trusting you uh, to have done this, that you look at task two from lesson three, revisit it. Um, this was the idea of the stopping distance and the speed of the car. And when we looked at that graph, we looked at that table, we said, hey, that stopping distance looks quadratic, so we took a square root, right? That's why we ended up with square root of y equals, and we were able to get these two functions, right? I think we already had this down when we left class yesterday, these top two pieces. I was like, sure, 100%, Mr. Kenny, I didn't pack up early. Okay. This is that lesson four that we were working on yesterday. We worked on it on Monday as well. You, you were here Monday, right? Okay. Some of us are still writing this down. What did I do down here in part B? Well, eventually, but what did I do to get started? I substituted what? F of x into, or 4x in the g function, right? So for those of us who like starting here, this is essentially not, essentially, this is what I did. F of x squared plus or 2 divided by 0 0.33. No, that's what it was. I put the square in the wrong spot. Oh no, square root of f of x, that's what it was. That square should have been on the inside. So, square root of f of x. Where there was a y, I put f of x in. And then I, use, I paid attention to the operations and do things nicely cancel out. Yes. Say, what's the relationship between a square root and a square? They are, so when I take the square root of that square, they cancel each other out. Notice I, then ju I just did one inverse at a time. I 
follow the order of operations. Negative 0.42 plus 0.42 is? Zero. Leaving me with 0.33x divided by 0.33, which cancels out, giving me a 1. So what was I left with? X. So were these inverse functions? Close. I don't know for sure yet. Why not? i got to do it the other direction. Do not forget, I cannot just check g of f of x. I also need to check f of g of y as well. You've got to check both of them. And I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm going to check your understanding. I'll, uh, I'll show you which one. I'll go ahead and end up giving it as a hint. But I made it so that one of them cancels out completely to show they're in one direction, shows inverse functions, but the other direction does not. And so we need to be attentive to checking both directions with that composition. Right, Davis? You alive? You awake? You cold? No, just a little tired. Morning time's a rough time for you. Got to wake up. What time do you wake up? So you're still, your brain's still waking up right now. Gotcha. Make sure you remember the whole idea is that that was squared. The square root will put parentheses around it and it's squared. Guys, make sure you're paying attention to those details. The whole point is that you're taking the square root of that square. They cancel each other out nicely. You don't have a square there. That square is not doing anything. Well, it's not canceling anything out. It's definitely doing so. Wait just another minute. I'm going to put the next order up there for the next composition, the f of g of y. Now I have f of g of y. Being attentive to those details, substituting things in correctly. Notice g of y got substituted in for x. Be careful with it. But do things nicely cancel out completely again? It equals y at the end, right? So those inverses are, are those inverse functions. Okay. Is there any part of this that I need to rewrite, clarify, explain? few of us are still writing some notes. So wait another minute. And with this last task, um, I'm not going to tell you everything up front, but I'm going to speed some things up in the sense that like, I'm going to go ahead and 
graph some things, and we'll I'll have you basically do a think pair share where you talk with each other a little bit, and then we'll just talk as a class about some ideas. <coughs> you got to Looks like we're done. That's not what I want. Okay, so here's what we're now about to do. We're going to graph the result from the composition in the same window as the model and its inverse. And so what was the result from the composition? G of f of x equals y, y. y or x, right? So we're going to graph the line y equals x. x. Up to this point, we have found graphically those inverses reflect across the line y equals x. So let's look at what that ends up playing out as here. Maybe I'm not, because there we go. All right, so there is the 0.33x minus 0.42 squared. Um, that's my original model. The second one was, I believe, the square root. Apparently I need to uh, shut down the there we go. square root of x. What was next on there? On the model, the equation. Square root of x plus 0.42 all divided by 0 0.33. Um, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit or change my window settings, I should say. Let's go. Window zoom. Zoom standard. I'm going to get rid of these things so that you can't see them. Okay. And so I want you to look at it. And I want to point this out. Um, Landon, can you hit the lights for me? So the red function here, that's my square root of x function, which, by the way, that square root of x, et cetera, what type of function are we going to call that? I want you to think logically about this. Do I have a base raised to a variable exponent? What's happening to y? Square, root. square rooted? You know what we call this type of function? Quadratic. What do you think? Quadratic. So remember, for it to be quadratic, what do we have to have? We've got to have a power of 2, right? Mm -hmm. So this one here. That would be quadratic, right? So, good thinking, but the original was quadratic, but y'all are saying something. What's happening to y? It's being square, square rooted, so we're going to call it a square, square root function. Mathematicians aren't original. What's the main operation that we're doing? We're taking a square root, so we're going to call it a square root, square root function. The name is what the thing is, okay? So, be aware of that. So, here's the thing. We've said all the way up to here, graphically, the, in, uh, the inverses reflect across the line y equals x. And so, does it look like we reflected across the line y equals x? Uh, yeah. A little bit. Why, talk, talk to me more. I need someone other than just this corner. Why does it look a little bit like we reflected across this line? <laughs> Someone other than just this group <laughs> looks like a leaf. Do we see some symmetry in there? Yep. I, I definitely see some symmetry. This point is probably right here. Yeah. This point yeah. is roughly here. I see some symmetry. <laughs> but is it perfectly symmetrical? No. What's the issue? One looks exponential, one looks quadratic. 
It's a good question. How did you get exponential? Well, let me ask you this. What type of function is that red one? Square root. So what does it look like? Square root. Right. So like we, we haven't done a lot of square root functions, but I mean, it literally is a square root function. Makes sense? So like we're not going to call that an exponential. But does what's the, the issue? What's the red line curve again? Like, like that one? No, it's not right. See, okay, so now we're getting to some ideas. Notice this curve matches this curve. And you're asking, does that red yeah, curve, not line? So, yeah, it's missing this piece, isn't it? Yeah. I want y'all to pay attention to this. The square root function is missing this piece right here completely. Does anyone want to take a stab at sketching what would this piece would look like if we reflect across the line y equals x? Doesn't have to be right, just want a prediction. The exact same. Okay, try it. Like, you mean it's going to be this? It's going to stay right here? What do y'all think? Wait, which one are you looking we're, we're, So we have this right hand side uh -huh. reflected, right? Uh -huh. Across here. And so Landon was saying hey, he thinks that that's going to stay exactly where it is. What do y'all think? The but we're talking about if we reflect this across the line y equals x, well, this half that we don't have, where would that be if we reflect it across? It would be where? At the top. Okay, why do you think it's up? So it's going to go up here as well? Wait, what? Like, okay, you see how the blue curve and where you just drew it, right? Mm -hmm. So, wouldn't the red, if it curves like that, wouldn't it be curving at the top? Oh, okay. okay. So let me point this out. What direction is this going? Up and right. This is going. I said we always read to the right, don't we? Don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So this is up and to the right as well, and almost we say more right than up, and this is more up and then right. But so what direction is this going? Left. Left. Right. And up. Okay. So I think there's something connected to that. Also, I would point out this is a smooth curve, is it not? Mm -hmm. So when I reflect, what should I get? Another smooth curve. So keeping those ideas in mind, someone can make a prediction of what the rest of this would look like if I reflect across the line y equals x. It, yes, it doesn't have to be right. I just need a prediction. Some of y'all need to get up and move move a little bit. Miles like. I, I'm scared, but no one else is doing it. Come on, try it. Thank you. Guys, it does not have to be right. I just need predictions. I need thinking. Something like that. Okay, so I'll make it a little bit darker. So what do y'all think? Could it look something like this? Yeah. So that, that's kind of what Miles is saying. Maybe? Maybe? Let's find out. Now I'm going to point this out. I'm going to type in relation. Because what happens, again, what's the key defining detail of an inverse function? The what? The what? What about the outputs? The inputs and outputs transpose, right? Mm -hmm. So where I had y equals earlier, now I'm going to type in x equals. x equals 0.33 y minus 0.42 squared. You can type anything into the relation section as long as it's two variables. I think. I don't think it will be on two. So what do y'all think? Was Miles somewhat on track with his prediction that it was going to go down here? 100%. Okay. But I want y'all to look at that inverse right now. I want you to look at that reflection. What is the problem with that reflection if I want an inverse function? I just want you to talk for, let's say, I want you to think for 60 seconds. Then I'm going to give y'all two minutes to talk and come up with what the problem is with that reflection across y equals x. Okay, so let me write that up here so it's clear. So the problem with reflection if we want, by the way, remind me, what is, how do we read this? Inverse of f of x. So this is just saying, 
What's the problem with this reflection if we want the inverse function? Okay. Notice, I will point this out. Notice how this part is exactly the same as what we had earlier? Yep. Okay. But we didn't have this piece. Now we do. So what's the problem with the reflection if we want the inverse of f of x? 60 seconds to think. And I'm going to give you two minutes to talk. So 60 seconds to think silently. Like, oh, I got it, right? Try to talk in silent time. So what did you think? Well, Landon's right. What's Landon right? That's not kind of playing the races line. Is that a line? When you say like, what was the word? Transpose or like? Yeah. The inverse is what they look like. Yeah. Like they, is that what they want to do with the root line? Um. That's what we would have to do wrong. Wow. Wow. Mr. Hobby, can inverses uh, pass through each other? Can they intersect? I feel like that would be fine, right? Yeah, that would too. Notice right here, this is going to intersect here at some point, isn't it? Okay. So it can it can definitely intersect each other. Wait, what were you just saying? Vertical, Vertical line test. Say again. They're not one to one. Ooh, bringing back that vocabulary. So the original function was not one to one. Okay. So I want you all to pay attention to that, and we're going to need to make a note of this in a second. So I'm going to talk about why this is important in a second, but notice originally it was not one-to-one. -one. Hold on to that idea. This reflection is not a what? One -to -one function. Just the reflection. Now, I don't even care about the one-to-one -one right now. It's not a function. The reflection is not a function. Wait, which one? The, the reflection. reflection. The, the reflection. Oh, okay. Right? The one that's supposed to be my inverse, it's not a function. Why is not a function? One, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Remember, that means this one input has how many outputs? Two outputs, right? So that's the problem here, is that that reflection is not a function. So if we reflect and it's not a function, that's a problem. So hear me clearly on this. So I'm going to introduce a lot of language that matters here. Vocabulary, we need to make note of this. So I love that Landon brought out this idea. The original function... is not one-to-one. -one. So the reflection across y equals x is not a what? It's a function. Not a function. Okay. Okay. So, this is really important. The original function was not one to one, so the reflection across y equals x is not a function. Yes, ma'am? Can you tell um, if it's not a function way before you graph it? Sometimes. So, the original function has to be one to one. I mean, so, What do you know about the degree of these two functions? Maybe. Might be fourth degree. Or sixth degree. Depends on the multiplicity here. So if it's a, what type of degree would that be then? Even. Even. So if it's an even degree, is it one to one? No. no. If it's an odd degree, it might be one to one. I say that because, um, Notice if it's an odd degree like this, is that a one-to-one -one function? Notice if I take a horizontal line, how many points does it intersect? Three. So, one, I know that every even degree function is never going to be one-to-one. -one. Odd degree functions might be one-to-one. -one. But then there's also other functions. Exponentials. They always look something like this or something like this. So. An exponential, is that going to be one to one? Notice, no matter what horizontal line I draw, it's only going to intersect one point. So, 
based on the type of function, you can know a lot of things. But it's by, based on knowing your types of functions. Okay. But also, I'm going to let you grab it. Good question. So, this brings up a new critical vocabulary word that Bella asked about earlier. Bella, what did you ask about earlier? Invertible functions. Invertible functions, if you break it down, do you know what this suffix right here means? Oh. What it means? Other times, uh, you may have it as an A-B-L-E. It's the same suffix, though. Able, Able to be what? Okay. Invert. Yeah. So if we say invertible, it is able to be inverted. So um, invertible functions are um, functions whose are functions, I'll say such that. Now I will break this down into an easier uh, phrasing in a second. So it's that the reflection is an inverse, I should say, across y equals x. So, let me ask you this. What's going to have to be true for a function to be invertible if the reflection across y equals x is a function? It's, it's the information is in the sentence before. It has to be one to one. At the end of the day, like for the reflection across y equals x to be a function, the original has to be one to one. So invertible functions, these are one to one functions. Invertible functions are going to be your one to one functions. Am I forgetting anything about that, Mr. Robbie? Sorry, I was a little distracted. No, you're good. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Invertible functions, though, they're able to be inverted. They're one-to-one -one functions, so that the reflection across y equals x is a function. You can write wherever you want. Yeah, there, there's literally a section of invertible functions. It, ooh, Mr. Javi, if it's not one-to-one, -one, is it impossible? Ooh, good question. The more you know? So right here, y equals x squared. What's the domain of y equals x squared? It's what? Negative, Negative infinity. infinity. It's positive infinity. Does it ever quit going left? No. Does it ever quit going right? Okay. Is that invertible? This one? Why do you say no? <laughs> it's, not one -to -one. it's not one to one, right? I will point this out. Notice when we think about reflections, what was going vertically is now going which direction? Horizontally. Now, specifically, a reflection across y equals x. So, this was going vertically is now going horizontally, which also, by the way, is y. What is this horizontal line going to become when I reflect? It's going to become a vertical line, right? Like that horizontal line is essentially testing or doing the vertical line test before you reflect. Okay, so clearly that's not a function. Does not pass my vertical line test. But what about this? What if I use y equals x squared? But what if I don't use the entire domain? What if. Interesting. What if I start at zero and go to infinity? Am I going to have all of this anymore? No. So all this goes away, all this goes away, all this goes away, all this goes away, and I start there. Is it now one to one? Yes. And so what's going to happen to all this? It goes away. It goes away. 
And so is my inverse a function? And what does this look a whole lot like right here? Anyone recognize that shape? How about the square root of x? Ah, so y does the calculator only have that top half of the graph? Because we restricted the domain, huh? Because that was what will make the inverse a function. Okay. So please make sure you have these notes to yourself. Um, invertible functions are functions such that the reflection across y equals x is a function. So what can we do? What was the language I used here to change the domain? I restricted the domain to make f of x what? For it to be invertible, that function's got to be one to one. So I restricted that domain to make it one to one. That's it. That's all I did. I restricted that domain to make it one to one. Can I erase that information about one to one and invertible? Does everyone who need that have that down? where we are. I'm going to change it up. We're going to have to start tomorrow with a demonstrator understanding, which means test will be Monday. I hate to do that to y'all. There'll be a half. No, you're fine. <laughs> Next Monday? Next Monday. Next Monday. You're fine. However, be aware, I'm going to take half the block on Friday to review and practice half the block to go into the next unit. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be a whole lot new. Next next unit's all about logarithms. And what do we know already about logarithms? They are the inverses of exponential. So you know what we're going to do within those logarithms? We're going to look at inverses. So it's going to help us continue to practice, continue to develop our understanding. There's a couple more things I want to talk about. So um, I don't think it would be fully fair to move on without doing this. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I graphed on the calculator the function f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 2. Notice the vertex is to the left 3 up 2, stuff we've dealt with in the past. What I want you to do, first off, let's ask this question, is that an invertible function? Miles says no, Xander, you said, do you think it is invertible? You don't think so, Xander, why not? You just saying no, not sure? I don't know. Leah, do you think this function is invertible right now? Not sure? Okay. Brianna, what do you think? All right, let's do this. Take 90 seconds, talk to your group. Come up with, is it invertible or not, and why? Is it invertible or invertible? Invertible. Invertible means able to be inverted. Yeah. I said no because we just did that and it went to the same shape. And it wasn't So, hey, my T-curve. No, the one? Okay. Look, T-curve. Yeah. I mean, it did. Yesterday. We all good with that idea? That's why we're just doing it. What do we do? Well, I'll bear it. I'll bear it. I'll bear it. I'll bear it. Y'all don't talk to me that much. I forgot. Y'all don't talk to me that much. It was a game. 
Without even giving you the graph, I could ask you to graph the inverse of this function. Because, well, let me let me point this out. What do you know about this function, even if you weren't given the graph? It's concave up. It's quadratic. What else do we know? The y-intercept is not 2. You. The vertex. The vertex is 3, 2. Well, and notice I'm going to I'm going to make a quick table to help me get the rest of this right. Notice I put the vertex kind of in the middle here. And what can I do as long as I have inputs? I can substitute substitute them in for it. to get the outputs, right? Okay, so what's one minus three? Negative two. Negative two. Negative two squared is four. Four. Four plus two is six. Okay. Two minus three. Negative 1, negative 1 squared, 1, 1 plus 2, 3. And you know what's going to happen right over here? Same thing, right? 4 minus 3 is 1, 5 minus 3 is 2. And so I get exactly the same thing. And you can actually see here very quickly, is this 1 to 1? Does each input map to 1 and only one output, and each output only has one input? No. No. It's not 1 to 1. So what could I do from here, though, if I want to ask you to graph the inverse? And hold on to this because you need to know how to be able to get the inverse. Ooh, I can't say that. Um, Why can't you say that? Well, because the inverse is not a function. Oh. Right? Right. Right? Okay. So I could call it y and g of y, and let's do it that way. All right, so what's going to happen to each of these points in my table? What's going to happen? They're going to flip. So what's 6 going to map to? Okay, what's 3 going to map to? 2, uh, two to 3. 3 to... And 6 to... And notice you can clearly tell now, is the inverse right now a function? Or is the reflection a function? No, right? I see very clearly that there's lots of inputs that map to two different outputs. And so this is what I mean when I could say, hey, I could ask you to uh, graph the inverse just by giving you the equation. You can substitute inputs in and get outputs out, and then you just switch the table. I have some check your understanding questions like that. Um, I'm not saying that I will necessarily on assessments. I'll have to think about it. But there are check your understanding to help you practice that. However, it's not invertible. We, I, I heard those conversations very quickly. I heard it in three different groups. As soon as I let you go talk to, in small groups, oh, it's not one to one. Correct. It's, it's not a one-to-one -one function. So the inverse is, or the reflection across y equals x is what? Not a function. What I want you now to do is I want you to talk with your small groups for just a couple minutes, and I want you to think about what you would restrict this domain to so that the invert or the function is invertible. So what is the domain restriction? Because, by the way, what is the domain right now? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. So what's the domain restriction? And the one hint I'm going to give you is this. 
when we restrict the domain, essentially we're going to get rid of part of the graph. And what do we need the restricted function to be? I'll talk about it in a second. I need my restricted function to be one to one. If you have a prediction, you want to come maybe like scratch out part of the graph. Go for it. Write your answer up here. But I want to give you 90 seconds again. Talk about your groups to think about what your domain restriction would be. Right now. We all Remember, one thing I would point out is be one to one. I'm going to just kind of scratch out part of this graph to help me visualize it one to one. Oh, so at the vertex. Okay. Notice I take out the entire left part of this graph from the vertex on. And so when I restrict my domain, what would the domain restriction be then? What's the minimum x? Bracket or parenthesis? Bracket. Notice it actually has that value of 3. And then what's the maximum domain? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. Never quits going right. You're a little wonky. Boom, roasted goddard. Uh, moving on from there. Oh, childish. Yeah, 100%. I'm down with that. I had to get some of y'all to wake up and make you laugh. All right. Plus, make myself laugh. All right. So, hopefully that makes the idea of the domain restriction make a little bit more sense. Can we go with that idea? Okay. The last thing that I want us to do is, oh, man, what I had planned to do, it's just not as fun with that. So, let's do this. All right. What I want us to do is first, so what we have now at this point is f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 2 with the domain of 3 to infinity. And what's my range? Negative infinity to. My bad. You're good. I was just like struggling, like we're sitting there. I'm like, oh guys, minimum y is two, isn't it? It never goes below this two. You hear that, Chris? Yeah, they just attacked me. I know they came at you hard. Be nice. Um. Okay. So what I now want to point out is this. Uh, what's my x-intercepts for this function? Okay, so there's none. By the way, what does that tell me about my zeros for this function? Oh, they're imaginary. There we go. Good, good, good. Remembering stuff. Y-intercepts. Well, but remember, we, all, we did take all this out, didn't we? So does it have any? Are you attacking me? I'm going to attack you. I'll let you know. Oh. Let's do this. I'm going to change one thing to make this a little bit easier in a second. I'm going to make this minus 4. Okay. Same domain restriction. Right? So now there's only going to be one x-intercept. What is that? 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. No y-intercept. Um, what do you think my end behavior for this function would be? Um, left, left hand side approaching. Hey. My bad. Hey. So x approaches something, right? Okay, so let's think left hand side. Follow. So I'm going to just kind of start here. I'm going to go left, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's my x approaching? I say x minus 3 squared minus 4. So what's x approaching? No, it's three. <laughs> Why would it be negative? Because he's seeing it going down and he's thinking negative, but remember that's a y direction, isn't it? 
three. And don't forget, here, we need the opposite. Remember, it's x minus h squared. So as x approaches 3, which, by the way, great catch on that for several of us, because I've never had a class catch that that quickly. Uh, so x approaches 3, what is y approaching? Um, negative, negative 4. That's my left-hand side. Right-hand side. x approaches infinity. Okay. So here's what I want you to do with this. One, find the inverse of f of x algebraically. Two, um, graph. Let's just do Actually, it's just, I'll leave that part off for now. We'll come back to that with time. Graph the inverse of f of x. Two, find the features of the inverse of f of x. What I am going to say is I'm going to leave this information up here. So let's say Jax, I'm going to put a white book up for you all over there to work. Sound good? Yep. Roll Tide. Let's get to it. My bad. Thank you, Landon. Now we got to make sure. I know, right? Well, there's a red light on it. So please note, okay, so for the camera and everyone at home, please note, right, the domain and the range switch. They, they swapped because those inputs and outputs transposed. It's just that reflection across y, the line y equals x. That's the foundational piece. So notice... What's my x-intercept now? I don't have one. What's my y-intercept? Five. Five, Super close. Five. Zero, five. zero five. Because notice what happened to my inputs and outputs. They, well, the, they, the, they swapped. The inputs and outputs transposed. So notice five zero became a zero five, which that's a y-intercept, right? Zero comma five. The a y-intercept of none became an x-intercept of none. So let's look at in behavior now. Wouldn't those just swap? That's a good point. Now, we have to be careful about how we're saying they swap. Because a lot of students want to swap the left-hand side and the right-hand side. But the sides don't swap. This x becomes a y, and this y becomes an x. Let's see if that actually holds true. So what is x approaching here? Um, four. Negative 4. And what's the y approaching? 3. So left-hand side, as x approaches negative 4, the y approaches 3. three. Right-hand side, as x approaches infinity, y goes towards infinity. So, notice once again, it doesn't matter when you learn it, it matters that you learn it because in behavior, domain and range, intercepts, all these things are showing back up. We're going to practice with them through this unit. What questions do you have before I give you a minute or so to um, take some notes? Okay, I know we only have about five minutes. One last thing I do want to point out, and I'm glad I didn't do this earlier. If y is equal to x minus 3 squared, hold on one second, do you know what I would do to find my inverse equation? What would I do to find my inverse equation here? Add 4 to both sides, cool. So y plus 4 is equal to x minus 3 squared. Now what? Square root. Uh-huh. Now, I need you to be careful. I need you to pay attention to this. Technically, on the left side, what should I write when I take that square root? Positive or negative. But here's the whole thing. That means this one input is going to have how many outputs? Two. Remember how we had to restrict the domain? And we only did the positive side? So we only put the positive side when we restrict that domain to make it a function. And so x equals the square root of y plus 4 plus 3. 
there's my inverse function. You can also call that g of y. If you put it in the calculator, it's got to be f of x. But to find inverse equations, solve for the input. There's one small thing I'll talk about with that tomorrow, but that's legitimately what I would do for the majority of it, okay? Um, please make sure that you take those notes. Write down what you need to. If you need to take a picture because we're running low on time, I get it. And I will be...